Welcome back, everybody, to the Next Generation of Superstars podcast. We are very lucky to have Deontay Graham, who plays OL at Jackson State University. He's from St. Louis, Missouri. He's just finished his first season at JSU under Deion Sanders, Coach Prime. Uh, thank you for being here today, Deontay. No problem. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So why don't we go ahead and kind of get right into your early life and kind of how you found your first passion for the sport of football and, and kind of how you really really got that that passion for the sport? Um, Growing up, I played basketball. Um, going into high school, I decided to play basketball too uh, as well. It wasn't until my, I believe my junior year, uh, we had got a, my high school, I got a new uh, football coach and he uh, sort of got me into, into coming out and coming out for the team. And so I came out for the team, uh, ended up making JV, played a little bit of varsity. Um, don't believe it was the first two games of the season I played and I got hurt. And that took me out for the rest of the season. I uh, had a shoulder injury. And then I still played basketball at that time too. So I uh, was out for a bit of that uh, going into basketball season as well. And then I decided to focus more on football going into my senior year. Got it. So you, so you were playing both basketball and football at the time? Yes. And then you got hurt and then you were focusing more on, on football. Um, what, what was it, what was kind of like your training like, you know, growing up, you know, did you have a great support system from your family and friends, you know, when you were really starting to take football seriously, you know, as you were in high school? Yeah. So like um, my mom, she was an athlete as well. So okay. my mom, my grandparents, auntie, uncle, just, all, 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 every bit of my family just supported me all the, all, all the way. My mom was always there to pay for the extra training sessions if I needed it or awesome. go with me to the gym if I wanted to go or pay for my gym membership or whatever. My mom always supported me 110% throughout anything I wanted to do. I love it. I love it. Would you say that she was one of your key role models or were there any other mentors that you had that's really helped you know inspire you to, to really perfect your craft in the game? Yes, I, I say it's my mom. I like seeing her, you know, work being able to see my mom work and also go back to school when I was younger, get her master's and whatnot. It, it, it let me see what a grind could do for you. So see, I say, I look up to her and her work, work ethic. Yeah. That's incredible. What about, you know, as you shifted into going, you know, what, what kind of brought you to, to apply to Jackson state and especially the experience of playing under coach prime, what was that like, you know, in this, this past season? It was, it was a great, a great experience for me. Um, seeing how he uh, ran, the, operated the team, it was more so like a professional style team. So we we got that professional kind of feel to it as to how to be in the pros. And we also got the experience, you know, a great coaching staff just from learning and being able to look up to those who came before us to that played the game and knew that know the game better than we do. And they just poured into it. So, it was, it was great on every aspect and every level for me as yeah. a young athlete trying to get to where they've been. Right. No, it's incredible. And, and especially, you know, you guys did go undefeated this year, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, we went 12-1. Uh, and one. We lost in our uh, bowl game. Oh, we lost in the bowl game. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. But, but still having that winning record, you know, and, and be able to have that influence and mentorship from someone like Deion Sanders and especially, you know, what was the culture like with your teammates and, and that kind of bond? Was that... Was that a special bond you guys formed over over this past season? Definitely, it was. We we all knew. I guess it formed kind of quickly and kind of like out of the blue because I don't, I don't think we like you know we didn't force anything. So it was more so like we all knew what we wanted. We wanted to go thirteen and zero. Unfortunately, we couldn't make that make that happen. But we all had that common goal in mind. So when you have a whole bunch of a uh, group of young men that come together and have a common goal, they're gonna find the small similarities to come together and form a brotherhood. And that's what we got to do. Right. Yeah. That, that's awesome. And, and especially, you know, the youth that looks up to you, you know, as a football athlete, what, what is your community, you know, how is, how are the, how is the community and the fans and the people that support you? How has that kind of, um, you know, affected you in your journey so far? It's been, it's affected me in a great way. It's, it's a great feeling to know that you had a, a, a broad amount of people that support you and will always be there for you no matter what decisions you make or, you know, 
as long as you know you're doing what's best for you and it's it's also it's it's a point to where you get a feeling that okay now i have this support system i feel like i can do anything right it gives you that extra motivation and is there anything in particular you know maybe not now but down the road that you want to do to give back to your community especially back in, in st louis definitely it's uh, a lot of things I know me uh, and a couple of my teammates uh, are from St. Louis. Me, uh, Kevin Coleman, and Antonio Doyle, we're all, we actually all played each other in high school. Um, it's a couple of things we talked about to give back to like uh, communities in St. Louis as well, because it's a lot of negative that people like to focus on us in St. Louis, but there's a lot of positive that I feel like isn't shined a light upon. Right. What, what's that culture been like growing up in St. Louis? Has it any of that? kind of helped you in, in, in an impactful way as you've gone on to your, your collegiate career so far in, in uh, Jackson State? Yeah, uh, you know, growing up St. Louis is, is a beautiful city, but there's also its trials and triumphs. It's uh, very humbling at times. So it's it, prepare, it, it prepares you. So you make the city what you want, want it to be, but there's also times where you know there aren't places that you should be at. So... Right. Staying away from those places and staying out and staying out of trouble is things that most times just people find each other like find difficult in the city. So that's all it is. But once you you know find that group of friends that keep your head on straight and don't want trouble and want and want to want the best for each other, then eventually all of you're going to elevate. So once that's what I found myself finding in St. Louis. So a group of friends that I call family, my brothers and sisters and everything. So, yeah. I love it. That's awesome. What, what, what are some of your, your high level visions and, and goals right now as, in, as you've been in your, your football career for some years now, and you're looking to take that to the next level? Um, what are your, your goals, you know, for your career? Do you want to take it to the professional level and, and be able to, you know, inspire people on, on a, at a bigger scale or what, what's, what are some of your goals you have in mind for yourself? I would love, I would love more than anything in the world to take it to a professional level. I would, I uh, I always tell people if God opened that door for me, then I'm going to walk through it. Um, I also have other plans. I, uh, sort of, I guess I'm sort of becoming into an entrepreneur of sorts. I'm sort of getting into business ideas and starting to plan out business, uh, plans and everything. So it's it's a lot of things that I want to do with my life, but of course, uh, professional football is one of those things. Yeah, I was going to ask that next is what are some of your hobbies and interests? And you said entrepreneurship. Is there anything in particular within the business world that that sparks your interest? Uh, yes, I have. Well, one, I uh, have a clothing merch uh, line. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm uh, also starting I'm trying to start up my own uh, wine la uh, label. So uh, having my own wine, I'm trying to start that up and uh, get that going. I'm that's currently in the works. Hopefully I can get that out. I'm planning hopefully before the, the summer of 2023. That's awesome. So, so going off of your clothing line, you know, what is that, what's kind of your, your differentiator with your clothing line? Is it something that kind of resembles, you know, you know, values you stand for? Or what, what is the, the purpose behind the, the clothing merch that you have? Um, Right now, starting off is more so, Merch as in like foot for football, like it has my number on it. We have like t-shirts, hoodies, um, hats, uh, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna build as we go. It's just more so. I wanted to launch something now to test and get you know a get feedback those initial supporters and feedback on what people like and don't like. And I think that's awesome for your overall brand, right? When you have those fans and then especially the youth that looks up to you to be able to represent, you know. Um, you know, your brand, you know, in, in, the, in the merchandise that they buy. I think it's incredible. Exactly. And then going on to the wine aspect of things, what, um, you know, what, what started your, I guess, your, um, your passion for wine? You know, what, how did you kind of, you know, figure that, that niche out that is something you want to create as a label? Um, I, uh, actually, I got it from, it was a commercial that I saw. And um, it was a, a, a commercial for a wine venue. And they were talking about the different types of wines and how a certain wine can make someone feel a certain way and different right. different taste of it. And so I got uh I got into like drinking uh wine and the different types of wines there are. And I'm um I'm more so go for like the sweet, sweet taste of wine. I'm not sure 
I know there's a lot of people that probably like a uh, dry wine and everything. I don't really like a dry wine. Uh, wine. I'm not, yeah, I'm so I'm sweet. I like. Well, sweet what, what's your favorite wine that you like right now, or what's a what, couple of your favorites? I would say the Stella Rosa Peach or Salt of the Earth. Salt of the Earth is I like. I really like that one. Okay, awesome. So, do you prefer reds over whites, or what's what's kind of your take on that? Uh, I like I'm, I typically like the whites over uh, over reds. I found one red wine, and that was in the salt of the earth that I like. Um, uh, well, actually, it was two. I did a, it was a wine tasting thing uh, event, and I, I cannot remember which one it was because it was like they were given to us in these cups, and they had like had the bottles up served around, and I can't remember which one it was. I, I and I try to, and I can't. Yeah. So 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 the main. The main attribute you like with wine is the sweetness to it. So when you're creating your wine label, you know, the goal of it is maybe create like a, a unique sweet taste that, that you haven't tasted in other wines. Would that be kind of your your main um, your main factor in an element? Exactly. Give That's it, awesome. give it, also give it its own to where people are like, hmm, I've never tasted it before. Where can I find more? Where, where, like, where does this come from? And they'll want to buy more. Right. No, it's, that's incredible. And I think, you know, as we talk a lot about this entrepreneur ventures and especially as you've been working with us at Birch in a little, a little over a year now, we started the company last December. Um, what are your initial thoughts as you've had some you know, success so far and our partner virtual stacks this platform a couple of weeks ago, and you're in this web three sports space, where do you see this as we continue to grow the educational component and everything and, and helping athletes like yourself really monetize your overall brand within multiple revenue streams and helping you gain that awareness and as well as, as giving you a platform to connect more with your fans. Where do you, what are your initial thoughts so far in the whole web three environment? It's amazing. Like from the launch and the support and feedback that I've gotten, even from the people on from uploading my content and, and, and the people that's bought my stacks, it's just, it's been nothing but love and I, I appreciate the opportunity and everything and it's just like it's limitless to where the opportunity can take you right from the connections the the platforms that it'll put you on and it's just it's what you make it yep it's whatever you put in until you'll get out and i think you know when the nil started it was legitimized last summer and a lot of you know a lot of companies out there and you know, they're, they're helping, you know, athletes like yourself, but they're not doing it in a way that's, that's consistent and that can actually grow you with your brand. And I think that's where you can gain these multiple revenue streams and be able to do stuff in a whole new blockchain driven internet that hasn't been done before. So it really, you know, it sparks that interest of, of more entrepreneurship and more just going into the unknown and seeing what that return can be. And it's, it's the possibilities, like you said, are endless. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And so, Kind of going into, you know, 2023 in a couple of weeks, what are some of your main goals, you know, as, as an individual, as an athlete, entrepreneur, what are, what are some things um, that are, you're really going to focus on, you know, for yourself in 2023? Um, This year, I haven't really, I haven't really thought about for the new year, but I know for one thing that I want is to, in all aspects, make myself better in all, in all aspects, either whether that's being a better athlete, better student, better better friend better person it's just i just want to be better if it's just one step better to, uh, throughout the 2023 year then that's just one step that i want to make but also i, I want to make be better in every aspect that i am i love it that's awesome and i think if, you know as we continue to all grow together you know we can only build brick, brick by brick right you get one percent or one percent better every day and that all adds up over time um what are what are some of the you know the athletes you look up to, you know, you being an offensive lineman, is there anyone in particular that's, you know, maybe they play in the NFL or they're retired. Is there anyone that re you really model your game after? Uh, I like, I like to look at Trent Williams a lot. Uh, Willie Anderson. I like uh, those two. I, uh, still actually try to look up and watch. I still watch Trent Williams highlights tapes and his workout videos. Cause I try to do his workout videos and try to get myself to that, to that, uh, to that point, because he's just, he, he, he's a beast like on every aspect if you watch his film he's he he he, he can run with a, a receiver if he wants to it's just it's limitless as the as the way he does and that's just a monster that he has within himself so i like watching him and trying to get myself to that point because he's at the highest point of what i uh what i want 
So, yep. Yeah, and it gives you that inspiration that you know if he can do it, you can do it too. And you're you're taking those lessons from him to, to apply it in your own way. What what is that as you talk about training and, and really becoming in that beast mentality? What does the training look like? You know, especially after your first season, like being in season is different than off season training. What does that that daily routine look like when you're in season? Um, a lot of times I think athletes will figure when the season is over, especially around these times is better to, you know, take like a break. For me, it's really kind of like there is no break. So you, it's more so like, okay, understand whether it's going to get a run, a quick lift or whatever, you need to be doing something. Cause once you don't do anything, you're going to get complacent with not doing anything. And so when you get back on campus to get the spring ball, you're going to be less than where you were coming out of the season. And you don't want to take any steps backwards when you're trying to get forward to get to get to the next level. And the pros is nothing that you need to take any steps backwards with. Right. So you don't want to, you don't want to stay stagnant. You want to keep on pushing and, and not working on yourself in all different aspects to keep Definitely. on building and going forward. So Definitely. what about how does the diet play into it? And even balancing like your social life and, and academics, you know, how do you what, what do you do to structure your, your schedule to, to help it, you know, work best for you? Um, me with a, a diet, I more so stay away from carbs and fried foods. So I, uh, like I may eat, I may eat pastas. I may, I may eat pastas. I try not to eat them a lot, maybe probably once or twice a week, but for more so it's just baked chickens, fruits, vegetables, and I try to, I try to, if I even it like, I think I haven't had fried foods since it's been like a month. Has it been? I think it may have been for my birthday in November. I think that's what, I think that was the last time I did. So yeah, I try, I try, I try to stay away from it and, and stay the course on doing what's right for my body so I can continue to elevate. Right. And you see all these athletes, you know, in the professional world, you know, they they care so much about their body, right. Their mind and body. And it's like, they treat it as like a temple, right. And they actually want to make sure they're what they're putting into it and feeding it is, is going to get them those results and outcome that they're looking for. So you, you're right on the point with that. So that's awesome to, to hear that perspective. Um, you know, we'll kind of leave it at this and wrap things up. What would you say as you've, you've been, you know, had such great success in an early age in your career, what are three lessons you would share to people in our audience that, that are listening and part of your journey? Um, what would you say three lessons that that's helped you the most so far? Um, three lessons for one is to always stay humble, always stay the course because no matter what, there's always going to be obstacles in your way. It's just, you just have to hurdle them and get over them and, and stay the course and the third one, I would be to believe in yourself because when you believe in yourself, there's, there's a lot of people that may stop believing in you or may not have never believed in you. But as long as you believe in yourself, you understand that the value that you hold and possess. So believing in yourself will take you longer and further than the belief of anyone else could can ever take you. So I say believe in yourself. Yeah. No, all great points and rephrase that, you know, always, always stay humble and always stay the course and always believe in yourself. And I think all three of those points are are really powerful, right? And that's, that's kind of painting your story. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to to be on our podcast and next generation of superstars, Deontay and everybody that's watching, look out for, you know, Deontay in 2023 and another breakout season next year. So very excited and grateful to have you on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it.